Hey guys, this is Dr. JT MD General Medicine and a rheumatology resident and a part-time YouTuber and I welcome you to my channel Dr. JTM and we all know that NEET PG exam is just few days away and all we need to do is revise and that revision should be so precise that means we need to target specific topics in a specific way and we need to assess what topics can be asked in this upcoming NEET PG exam and apart from that we need to know new pattern of MCQs because in the last two to three years 80 percent of the question paper is clinical MCQs but in a different new pattern every year so we need to analyze and revise properly and apart from that lastly we need to stay motivated till the NEET PG exam so I will be targeting on these three aspects that is specific targeted topics, new pattern MCQs and how you can stay motivated. So I will be posting videos on these aspects in the upcoming days in order to train you as good as possible for this neat PC exam. And those videos will be called as the power revision videos. In this power revision videos, we will be discussing the most important topics, new pattern MCQs, high yield concepts and the MCQ points that can be asked in a direct manner in the upcoming NEET PC exam in a, in a specific manner by showing the images and also the graphical representation. So I will be posting every day one power revision video that will really help you in your revisions for the exam. So keep watching the channel and subscribe to it and share with your friends and with no delay, let us start the first episode of the power revision videos by Dr. JTM. Power revision by NEET PG 2025 and the question comes like this. A 55 year old male patient with diabetes, hypertension, presence with crushing type of chest pain, improving with rest. It radiates to his neck and arm and in associated with dyspnea, nausea, vomiting, sweating and dizziness. Blood pressure on the lower side, heart rate on the higher side, SPOT is on the lower side and the chest shows bilateral crackles and elevated JVP. And there is also cold clammy peripheries on examination. EKG will be showing as this way we can clearly see v1 and v2 has raised st segment and it is an st elevations are present in the consecutive two leads so what can it be as a possibility so in this entire big question we don't need everything to focus on what are the points that my eye should go on to so my eyes will be on the chest pain at rest radiating to left arm sym sympathetic and parasympathetic symptoms hypotension tachycardia hypoxia ecg showing st elevation in two consecutive leads so what it is it will be STEMI, ST elevated MI, it can be anterior wall MI or inferior wall MI, but V1, V2 involvement is there. So it can be mostly into the anterior wall MI. But the point we need is not just the diagnosis. We need to focus on the treatment protocols and the new pattern of MCQs, uh, new pattern of questions that are being asked in this particular need PG exam. So what will be the new pattern MCQs on revascularization and treatment protocols in ST segment elevated MI. So revascularization is the key. Emergency angiography and PCA should be performed. If PCA cannot be performed within 90 minutes, perform thrombolysis with TPA, retiplase, streptokinase. If there are no contraindications to perform this thrombolysis. So what will be the contraindications? Keep watching. I'll be discussing that also. While awaiting the revascularization, load the patient with dual antiplatelets and try to start the patient on heparin drip. If the patient is in cardiogenic shock, you need to go for mechanical ventilation and immediate oxygen support and pain relief with nitroglycerin and beta blockers also. Yes, the beta blocker that you wanted to give metaprolol in MI patients have anti uh, pain or analgesic effect is also there with this beta blocker. So admission on admission, the patient should be receiving statins, beta blocker and ACE or ARB as the patient also having a uh, diabetes diabetes you need to control the diabetes as well so possible complications in this particular type of mi anterior wall mi or inferior wall type of mi the patient might land in cardiogenic shock heart failure bradyarrhythmias and ventricular arrhythmias what is the most common ventricular arrhythmia that can be present in this particular patient and that is a question ventricular tachycardia is the answer that can be asked as an mcq and most importantly the management part what is the protocol saying the power revision comes here so for pain beta blockers morphine oxygen and you need to go for aspirin and clopidogrel are the antiplatelet drugs that can be given as an an anticoagulant in inferior wall mi you need to avoid nitrates due to the risk of hypotension so if the patient is having two three avf lead st elevations and the patient is having excruciating type of chest pain in instead of going for a uh, nitroglycerin because the inferior wall mi patients will have high risk of going into hypotension because the pay, uh, it the heart will be under the preload dependent and the preload will be affected in the case of inferior wall mi and obviously the patient will land in more hypotension 
hypotension and he will collapse so for the pain you can go for beta blockers or morphine and contraindications to thrombolytics will be major gi or brain bleed history recent surgery that is at least two weeks if it is more than two weeks the patient can be given severe hypo severe hypertension that is more than 180 over 110 and non-hemorrhagic stroke in the last six months in these will be the contraindications for the thrombolysis in the patients of st segment elevation mi and commonly occluded co coronary arteries in the patients will be left anterior descending artery more common than the right coronary artery more common than the circumflex artery so and finally what else can be asked like ischemic pathophysiology like block rupture will be type 1 mi demand type of ischemia is present that is more oxygen and blood demand has been misbalanced that is type 2 mi coronary artery dissection is also one more cause that can lead to this st segment elevation and coronary angiogram is the gold standard for diagnosing acute coronary syndrome and spontaneous coronary artery dissection is more common in young women and other collagen or mixed connective tissue disorders like comment on what is that most common mixed connective tissue disorder that can lead to this spontaneous coronary dissection because that is very important mcq and that's it in a very short time the power revision on the management protocol and the new pattern of points that can be asked in the need pg 2025 has been discussed and that's it you don't need to waste hours of uh, time on video lectures just follow me subscribe to me i'll be giving you the revision I will be giving you the best revision for this neat PC exam and that's it for this video. I'll be meeting you in the next episode tomorrow. Until then, see you again. This is Dr. JT, MD General. See you again. This is Dr. JT signing off.